Support Wrestle Talk. Give us a subscribe. Ronda Rousey screws Becky Lynch. Baron Corbin is no longer the Raw General Manager. And it turns out that Dolph Ziggler is still a heel. And people wonder why no one cares about him. I am Luke Owen. Press the thumbs up and leave a comment I can reply to. And use the eye above my head to vote in the poll and let me know what you thought of the show. Where you can choose from best of both worlds, great per view, thumbs in the middle, mere per view, and the worst of both worlds. And keep an eye on the screen to keep track on the Wrestle Talk predictions and how they will affect the overall overall Wrestle League predictions table, where the loser by the end of the Royal Rumble will have to perform a wrestler's theme song. So with all that admin out of the way, this is WWE TLC 2018 in about four, now hold on, just wait a second. This show is too long, there's no way we could do it in four minutes. This is WWE TLC 2018 for as long as it takes to review. After having a couple of shows where the Cruiserweights were featured on the main card, the Cruiserweight Championship match was moved back to the kickoff show where it bloody belongs. That'll teach you forget over. In all seriousness, it is a shame to see these guys get bumped down the card again, especially when the Cruiserweight Championship matches have been such a fun part of the last few pay-per-views. This is the exact match you would expect it to be. Lots of knee-slapping action with reversals, counters, and plenty of near falls. Both tried really hard, but the crowd really weren't into it, and why would they be? This company keeps presenting 205 Live as third rate. Murphy hit the cheeky Nandos, Cedric hit a Death Valley driver on the apron, and eventually Buddy hit Murphy's Law for the win. A fun opener that deserved more time and a better reaction. Also bumped to the kickoff show was the ladder match between Elias and Bobby Lashley with a guitar hanging above the ring. The rules of which on Raw were explained as the first person to pull down the guitar could use it as a weapon. Both men really put over the dangers of the ladder match with some crazy bumps and Elias overcame both Leo Rush and Bobby Lashley to pull down the guitar and oh no wait he just won. Wait, what? Lashley then laid him out with a guitar to make sure no one got over. A waste of time this was. But the main show kicked off with what everyone has been waiting for. The finals of Mixed Match Challenge Season 2. WWE had three whole months to plan out this tournament, featuring big names like Finn Balor, Bailey, Braun Strowman, Ember Moon, Bobby Lashley, Charlotte Flair, The Miz, Asuka, Rusev, and AJ Styles to name but a few. With any of these names possibly earning the coveted number 30 spot in the Royal rumbles. And the final was R-Truth and Carmella versus Jinder Mahal and Alicia Fox. A good work, WWE. This was a very short match that felt more like dance break than anything else. R-Truth and Carmella did a rap that was somehow less entertaining than the bar last Tuesday, and Carmella tapped out Alicia Fox with a code of silence. So the number 30 entrant in next year's Royal Rumble will be Carmella and... Ah, Truth. I would imagine that Truth will not be coming out at number 30 next month. What was funny, however, was Truth revealing that the holiday they won will be at WWE headquarters in Stamford, Connecticut. High chinks will ensue, no doubt. The commentary team for SmackDown matches on TLC was, of course, Corey Grave, Todd Phillips, and Byron. Wait a sec. You're not Byron Saxton. Yes, sadly, Byron Saxton was unwell, so David Otunga returned to SmackDown commentary for the night, and, well, I thought I should mention it here, because I'm not sure he said anything all night. And yet, he was still somehow better than Renee Young. The Bar New Day and the Usos had, as you would expect, a very good match, but sadly, it didn't get a lot of time. After a bit of schmoz and lots of moves at the end, Xavier Woods walked into a bro kick by Sheamus for a bar retention. I am very much ready for these three teams to stop wrestling each other now. In case you missed it, Vince McMahon returns to Raw tonight, and I'd be surprised if you missed it because they mentioned it enough throughout the night. Vince McMahon returning to TV for no storyline reason? Anyone would think that Raw's ratings are bad or something. Baron Corbin ordered his personal referee Heath Slater to count out Braun Strowman in their TLC match as he knew he wouldn't be able to compete. But Braun did, however, come out and reminded Baron Corbin that TLC matches are no DQ, so anyone could come out from the back and help him win. And like Ebenezer Scrooge in the classic holiday tale Muppet Christmas Carol, Baron's past actions came back to haunt him. You know, it really was brave of Charles Dickens to try and adapt Muppet Christmas Carol. It's a near-perfect film. Finn Balor came out because of all the matches Baron Corbin's put him in. Chad Gable and Bobby Roode came out because Baron gave them multiple tag team championship matches, I guess. And Apollo Crews came out because he's a babyface, I guess. Finally, Kurt Angle returned and everyone beat up Corbin, allowing Braun to pin him with a foot on his chest. So that's the end of Baron Corbin as Raw General Manager, and Braun will now face Brock Lesnar for the Universal 
Universal Championship at Royal Rumble. And before you make a comment, there have been other TLC matches that have ended in pinfall, including the Shields debut match and when Kurt Angle teamed with them last year to take on Braun Strowman, Kane, The Bar and The Miz. What an odd match that was. The tables match between Natalia and Ruby Riot went a lot longer than I would have expected, especially considering as this storyline has been presented as an afterthought on TV since Survivor Series. Nanny dispatched of both Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan through tables and countered Ruby's table with her father's picture on it by bringing out a table with Riot's picture on it. My favourite part of all of this was Michael Cole saying, I can't wait to see how Ruby Riot reacts when she sees that table with her picture on it. But Ruby didn't react to it at all. Instead, she just looked at it like, huh, would you look at that? Natty eventually put Ruby through the table to win for a nice moment. Let's hope that this storyline is over and we can move on from all the Jim the Anvil Neidhart references. And if you thought Ruby is getting some sort of push in this company, you would be mistaken. Drew McIntyre got a really good showing in his match with Finn Balor, which felt more like a showcase for the Scotsman in what I think is his first singles match on pay-per-view since his return. So with that said, it's even more surprising that Finn Balor pinned him after some interference from Dolph Ziggler. You don't have Drew McIntyre pinned for 95% of 2018 and then he loses twice in the space of a fortnight? Later in the night, Finn Balor got into a scuffle with Dolph Ziggler, who definitely isn't a babyface. They're going to have a match tonight on Raw. That will put butts in seats. Rey Mysterio took on Randy Orton in a chairs match. And no, you didn't set your way back machine to No Way Out 2006. Rey Mysterio and Randy Orton really had a pay-per-view match here in 2018. I'm not really saying that like it's a bad thing, but WWE did used to make fun of WCW doing this all the time, and TNA was heavily criticised back in the day when it pushed older talent over younger and up-and-coming guys and girls. Why not use Ray and Randy to elevate your new talent? Mysterio did have the best spot of the match when he did the penguin slide with a steel chair to the outside, but the finish saw Randy Orton set up four steel chairs sitting in a row and tried for the RKO, but Mysterio reversed it and rolled Randy up for the win. I guess this feud must continue. At this point of the show, I thought TLC was a perfectly fine little show that could be best described as not too shabby. But it really kicked up a gear when Ronda Rousey had easily Nia Jax's best match since well, the last time she was in the ring with Ronda Rousey, and before that her NXT Women's Championship match with Bayley at TakeOver London. I'm not sure if this has been said enough on this channel, but Ronda Rousey is really, really good at professional wrestling. She looked awesome during her comeback on Jax, tapping her out with the armbar after kissing the hashtag facebreaker for a nice touch. Not even the charisma vacuum of Tamina could suck up all this great crowd reaction for Rousey, despite her best efforts. After the match, Nia refused an interview and then got punched in the face by Becky Lynch. I really hope this isn't the payoff to hashtag Facebreaker, even though Nia's heat has diminished somewhat since Survivor Series. Ronda also cut a promo later in the show about Charlotte Flair, saying that Payback is a bitch and she's the baddest one on the planet. Foreshadowing. Here's a shocker, Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles had a great match on pay-per-view. I know, I'm as stunned as you are. This was helped by the pair being given nearly half an hour to tell a great story of two guys who know each other very, very well. There was a lot of back and forth action with Bryan playing the cock heel trying to get away, while AJ was the confident babyface who never wanted to give up. The match got several This Is Awesome chants and featured a great finish that played off their TV match just before Survivor Series. With AJ nearly knocking down a referee with a phenomenal forearm, only this time he dodged the running knee with a small package, which was reversed by Brian into one of his own for the win. It's a perfect finish too, because while clean, it's far from decisive, hopefully setting these two up for a rematch at Royal Rumble. What was surprising, however, is that Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose had a really boring match that the crowd were not into whatsoever. Given all the build and focus put into this feud, it's a real shame to hear the crowd chant this is boring at them. It's even more of a shame that there's probably more to say about the bickering between Corey Graves and Renee Young than the match itself. Part of the problem is that although it was a blood feud, this never felt like a war. And it wasn't a bad match either, it was just a dull one. With Dean Ambrose winning by hitting the Dirty Deeds out of nowhere to capture the Intercontinental Championship, which he hit because Seth Rollins distracted himself with feelings and emotions. This was by far the most disappointing thing on the show, and it was clear at this point, deep into this very, very long show, that the fans in attendance just wanted to see Becky Lynch. Which thankfully they got next when Becky defended her SmackDown Women's Championship against Charlotte Flair and Asuka. Not only was this
this a deserving main event with the caliber of star and the story going into it, it more than delivered. Asuka threw Lynch onto a ladder. Charlotte did a senton off the top rope to the outside through a table. Lynch squashed Flair through the announcer's table off a ladder. Everyone went nuts with the kendo stick. Flair speared Asuka through the barricade and so much more. They did everything they needed to do while at the same time not doing too much, allowing each of them to sell the previous spot. The finish saw Becky and Flair up on a ladder when Ronda Rousey came out from the back and pushed the ladder over, allowing Asuka to climb and win the SmackDown Women's Championship. This was a terrific TLC match and easily the best thing on the show. And it capped off a really fun pay-per-view to round off a pretty much hit and miss 2018. Both Women's Championship matches ruled, the AJ vs Bryan match was great and everything else was pretty much decent. Apart from Seth and Dean, of course. And the Wrestle League predictions table sees Laurie in the lead with 19 points. He got a bonus point for predicting how many tables would break in the show, which was fine, because apparently the announcer's table doesn't count, and that would have awarded me the bonus point. Ollie is in second place with 17, and I'm just behind with 16. I'd better start warming up those vocal cords. WWE TLC was a great purview. That main event was a great TLC match, but what are the seven best TLC matches of all time? Click the video on screen right now to find out. I've been Luke Owen, and that was wrestling.